Lyric Opera of Virginia presented its condensed version of Puccini's classic opera La Boheme at the Virginia Museum of Contemporary Art, MOCA, in Virginia Beach, March 16th. It was thoroughly enjoyable and satisfying, not least because of Juan Hui Choi, who sang Rodolfo with passionate conviction, superb command of dynamics, and excellent breath control. His acting was no less impressive, and his slight frame fit the role of the starving poet more accurately than, well, than most tenors. He had a quality of stillness that's hard to do without vanishing, but his rapt attention to Mimi's story riveted the audience's attention, too. His aria, O Suave Fanchula, was just gorgeous, with the subtle accompaniment of Vincentner's harp and music director Joseph Walsh's thoughtful piano. Melissa Shipp and Burroughs sang Mimi with great charm and simplicity, but looked rather too healthy to be dying of consumption. As Musenta, Christina Bachrock was a shade unrefined vocally, but that fit well with her flirtatious character. In the final scene, when Musenta gives her jeweled earrings to be sold to buy medicine to, for the dying Mimi, both Bachrock's singing and acting were empathetic and generous. Michael Wyant was a relatively introverted Marcello, a ferocious artist stabbing at his palette and canvas with vigor, but clueless about his girlfriend Musetta's motives. As the musician Chonard, Chase Peak was robustly extroverted with a big exuberant voice and confident manner. Adam Richardson's deep voice projected calm wisdom as Colline, the philosopher, singing together the four, Juan, Wyant, Peake, and Richardson displayed the attractively virile sound of close friends who may bicker with one another but remain intensely loyal. Stage director Stephanie Vlahos brought an impressive bag of tricks to this production. To begin with, omitting an intermission kept the audience's attention undistracted. The relatively cramped stage underscored and intensified the interaction between characters, Mimi and Rodolfo, Marcello and Musetta. Small bits of well-thought-out stage business were telling details, such as Colline looking sadly at his treasured coat, his one luxury, which he'll pawn to buy medicine for Mimi, or Rodolfo's tender caresses. Not too much, not too little, just enough. It's the little things that make the difference by engaging the heart as well as the ear. One thing could not have been planned, the polar vortex that had plunged this area into unusually frigid weather. When Mimi and Rodolfo sang of the hardships of the long cold winter and their longing for spring, every audience member was in perfect sympathy. I normally find updates a little suspect, but moving to the Paris of the 1950s was a good move that made appropriate costumes more accessible. The little girls' twin sets and long circle skirts festooned with pro poodles, they were right on the mark, and Mimi's red beret was perfect. In her first scene, Musenta's glitzy dress was a little over the top, but her subsequent costume was well thought out with only one false note. No nice Catholic girl would ever have worn a rosary as a necklace. The small group of children sang well and enthusiastically, but one could have done without the overly loud recording of Frere Jacques between scenes. Having the youngsters bring out the adult singers for curtain calls was a charming touch. The supertitles were well done, contemporary, without being forced. Just ignore the bit about the horse and carriage. From the other side of the footlights, I'm Empty Ridge.